Um, congratulations on the film. It's great. Thank you. And um, we're like really excited you're all here tonight. Do you want to just tell us how the project started and how you decided to make this movie together? Yeah, th this is actually for Jennifer, but I just want to get her started. Uh, no, I don't want to do the whole thing. I, I just want to say that Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer got this uh, rolling and she very much got this rolling with Ari. And um, it's a great story that I'll let her tell, but uh, it is an um, unusual way, I think, for a film to start. And so it was quite beautiful. She was on tour with these guys in 2006. And there you go. Yes. Sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Originally, I met Ari from my little brother. He took my band, Shell Shag, to uh, do a uh, punk show that was happening at an all-access program in New York City. And I met Ari and her little son, Wilton. He was a baby. So we kind of helped them get around and hung out together. And then years later, our booker asked me to road manage them, and I did it against all odds because <laughs> it was pretty difficult, difficult fun, as we got to call it. And Ari really wanted this movie to be made, and we did it <laughs> after about 10 years. And Bill and I have been working together for five, and thank you, Bill. I think you did a great job. I think we've given the band um, the recognition they've deserved for a long time. So thank you for being here. I, I just want to say to you that uh, th this is kind of a part of that story, as I understand it, where you sort of see it in the movie too. Tried tried to get it in there, of like you know this sort of realizations happening, like a sort of murky realization about wanting the film to happen, and then also sort of another more deeply emotional realization that maybe not all is well, um, and sort of you know these people figuring this out and all this sort of happening at the same time, and I think an interesting from my perspective of when Jennifer was sort of all of a sudden Ari's gone and she's mourning the loss of a friend and at the same time you shift these piles of tapes like you know it's not just couldn't just concentrate on the morning it was like also there's this enormous job to do that's just started that Ari very much got going and we've been joking all about this this like we're here because she decided that we were supposed to do this and we were supposed to be <laughs> a long time ago that we were supposed to you know make this happen and so i just gotten off a tour with my first film a film called kill all redneck pricks which is another music <laughs> everybody likes the title um and she was like why don't you come along because we used to tour together so then we then we got in with tess and started ripping through it as much as we could yeah yeah Palo Matissa, do you want to tell us like your side of the story, how it started for you, how you wanted the film to be made, and what you were expecting? Started the movie or the band? No, no, the, the, the movie. Ah, the movie. So he just came around. They both came <laughs> around to my house, and they wanted to, you know, have me tell the story. And who, you know, like you tell your story. That's the best thing I have is my story. You know, I cannot tell you the story. So he asked me questions. And it, it was kind of like, a, it was kind of good that to be so far away from it. And, and when I left music, you know, I just was kind of sick of it. You know, you know, I didn't want nothing to do with it. But coming back, then you can see like the pieces that, you know, they still resonate with you and the things that they were just junk, you know. And so going through it and telling the story helps you grow somewhere, you know, you, that was your life. So it was really like a special and one thing that really I appreciate, you know, like being connected to Tessa. We connected over the years here and there a little bit, you know. Um, we were friends, and we're still friends today. I think to me that is like huge, with all the things you know we went through and experienced. But you know, she really was in the group longer than me, so she should say it. Like, <laughs> you should go for it. Well, it's a bit difficult because this is specifically you're asking about the film. So. I was with, obviously with Jennifer on the tour, the six week tour. And um, yeah, Ari wanted to film the whole time. At that point, that was 2006. So obviously at that time, Ari, as far as we know, was not ill. This is the confusing part. It's probably confusing for you as well because we really didn't know. We had some 
hint at some point, but she kept telling me that she was getting better. So this last tour, as you see at the end of the film, then it's becoming really obvious to, to us. I think we're kind of in denial as well. Um, so both Jennifer and me, I don't think we could rest unless we completed this movie. So that's really why it's been done, because we just need some peace. Because <laughs> it was so traumatic. I can't stress losing Harry. But she's still with us. <laughs> Do we have any audience questions? I'm a bit weird myself. I'm probably not like the others, but I prefer to be to be left as a cult group. That's just me. I don't want the recognition, if that makes sense. All right. <laughs> yeah, come on, if you want to say something. Well, so I am a teacher, right? And I teach. And so guess what? Like now, we're in the history books of music. So in my school, I teach little kids Spanish, and they're studying about punk rock. Johnny Rotten. <laughs> He's in the school. You know, they didn't let us play in the schools then, but now we're established. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had one student, like, he came around my school, right? And so then, where, you know, what's he doing? He had a big camera, and then... After that, I'm, you know, being a teacher, you know, and then they're leaving. I say, adios, you know, buenas, buenas tardes. And this little, little kid looks at me and he goes, bye-bye, Pomolev. <laughs> <laughs> so the word is out, you know, so their Spanish teacher is Pomolev from this list. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> Well, I, I would like to say, since we played, I have seen a change in the form that there are far more female musicians than there were when we started. Definitely. So even that small achievement, to me, is a big achievement. And you've just got to try harder. I'm sorry, to stand out, you've, you've, got, to be, you've got to do what you've got to do, whatever that is. But you, you've just got to try, keep trying. Um, I don't think, speaking as a woman, we need to ask permission to be noticed. You know, like Vivian has said twice, you know, we were invisible. You are who you are. If you're a woman, be a woman. Don't ask permission from other people to be who you are. Just do what you need to do. Live your life. And sometimes you have recognition, sometimes you don't. It doesn't really matter. Really, like just do what you need to do. And uh, I mean, I think in some way we got to play, you know, with the clash and that because we were girls too, you know. So I can say yes, that it is, it's like a horrible thing, you know, whether you are discriminated because of the color or your gender or whatever, you know, you people discriminate others because you are not in my group. So I can be more powerful than you, but really don't ask permission. Just take it and do what you need to do. You know, like just really like, don't wait for them to give it to you. Well, chaos is just something that exists eternally. So do I feel it? Well, sometimes, yeah, but I don't, it's a very difficult question. I don't know what to say. If chaos was not just in the punk period. It's always been there. Yeah. Okay. When things are created, when you have a project in your room, like if I'm doing something, a sewing project, or a something, whatever, whatever it is, my room likes, looks like a mess. When you like, uh, we were uh, with the raincoats today, and you know, like Gina was talking about her dad wanted to put the cap in the cabinet. You know, like when things are so neat, you know, you can't change anything. Like, I think good things come out of shaking things. There's many institutions that we come in contact every day, and they need a little chaos. They need, and we need to have, but it's like, a, it's a kind of chaos. It's an intelligent chaos we need. You know, people are going crazy, killing each other. 
Look at the president we have. Yeah. Oh, so, so, and the other guy is crazy here, and they want to press this button here and press the other button there. That's, we need to have an intelligent chaos, not that kind of chaos. You know, we need to be bigger than that. We need to be the humans that we believe in, that we can believe in, that, you know, I have my granddaughter and my daughter here. I want them to look at me and say, there is something she grew, she made mistakes, she did that, whatever, but I'm proud of her because she did her best. And whatever life gives you, do your best. Like really hold it and do, you know, like do something with it. She, said, she put it so much better than I did, thank you. <laughs> this woman here, I am so glad how Bill got her to tell the story. I think it's perfect. I really think like, first of all, this guy, four years, four years. I mean, that was a lot of work. I've done video editing. That is an amazing amount of work. You guys don't know how many hours goes into this little thing. And then the way he got Tessa, uh, the quiet one, I just love her humor, her honesty. She's not trying to be your like pop star, I'm great, you are whatever, you know, like look at me, you know, she's not like that. And I appreciate that about this movie. This is very unique and very different. And you know, everybody that has helped. I am really, I mean, I'm glad to be here with you all. And thank you, Jen. <laughs> I don't, I can't, You're, it's about you. Thank you for letting me tell your story. So there Thanks is for a, existing. Sorry. There is another screening of the film tomorrow, so do spread the word. And also, at the moment, there is a DJ night going on in Benigo Bar and Kitchen, uh, celebrating the legacy of the Slits, and Tessa is gonna do a special DJ set, so don't miss out. Yeah. Exactly. And Thank you so much for coming, and we also want to uh, introduce really quickly our great uh, partners uh, for this movie, Pledge Music. Um, it's available there. You can come. You can support the project on their website, DVD, all the you know poster, that sort of thing. Check it out. Thank you for coming so much. We look forward to having a drink with you. And thank you for being with us tonight. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you.